Hi, Mateo. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Adam Everson with Flippa. How are you? Good today. Hi, Adam. Fantastic. So it looks like we're talking about Smart Cover. You're currently listing with Flippa. Tell me a little bit more about the business itself. Uh, tell us about yourself, your background, and how you got started with Smart Cover. So yeah, so I'm uh, Matteo. I'm the CEO of uh, Visor Group. Uh, we are a company that creates direct-to-consumer brands. Um, we have about five brands in our portfolio, and Smart Cover is one of uh, the brands that we have. Um, I used to work in Shopify. I worked there in uh, working with the largest uh, merchants in the world. My business partner as well is an ex-Shopify, actually with about four of us that are ex-Shopify within the Visor Group. Um, and we basically specialize in uh, e-commerce uh, in all its uh, nuances. So from uh, supply chain, marketing, um, development, and all of that. So we started Smart Cover uh, last year, uh, around February 2020. Um, and we scaled the brand from zero to about uh, 10 million in revenue within uh, 10 to 11 months. Um, we started with a thousand dollars, so we didn't invest that much. We scaled the brands, uh, slowly at the beginning, and then it started to ramp up and pick it up, mainly utilizing, uh, acquisition via Facebook ads. And then we did a lot of native advertising as well. Uh, we came at the right time with the, with the, uh, product that was like, uh, the mask, the face mask. And then we slowly started to diversify into other products that are all related to the nature of the brand, which is like smart cover using uh, uh, smart fabrics and moving into more travel and lifestyle. So our current portfolio actually has uh, the face mask still because you know we're still selling pretty good. Uh, then we have the sleep mask, uh, which uh, we developed within, it took about two months to develop. And then we have a laptop cover with like, uh, it's, it's like a three in one laptop cover. Um, and we launched like a travel adapter as well, and we have a few minor accessories too. Um, maybe we are why we're selling the brand if it's doing so good. Uh, I think the main the reason why we had decided to let go of Smart Cover is because during the time that we built Smart Cover, we realized that there was a gap in the market in terms of like uh, SaaS and an e commerce platform. So we decided to actually start investing in that and building our own e-commerce platform, which we are in beta right now. And we're having like a big launch in July. So there is limited amount of money that we have to invest in an e-commerce platform. We don't really want to go the VC route yet. Uh, so we're looking into taking smart cover and uh, with the money of the sale to actually financing as let's call it like a seed fund, the e-commerce platform, which is called Pop-Up, by the way. Okay. So okay. Yeah. thank you for that high level of overview. I appreciate yeah. it. But tell me, as an e-commerce business, where are your products manufactured? So the manufacture between uh, UK, uh, the mask actually is made in UK, and the rest is made in China. The sleep mask and the smart and the laptop cover, they're both made in China. And we work with uh, three suppliers. Um, and we, the products are OEM. So we have uh, OEM design, which is kind of a unique design. The, the, we have a patent and a trademark on the name, Smart Cover, and we have a patent on the face mask, but we don't have a patent for the other products yet. Awesome. Now tell me, you, you talked to base a little bit about your marketing through Facebook ads and social media. What, I guess, how have you primarily marketed your product and what demographic and where are your customers originating from? So we launched the product in different regions. So we are actually, we actually have 10 different Shopify stores um, in different currencies and in different uh, languages as well. So that allowed us to be able to scale profitably and also allow us to kind of diversify a lot during the time that e-commerce, uh, you know, was going a little bit up and down. Um, so mainly I would say that 80% of our business is outside of US. So it's not US. We haven't tapped much into the US market just because we saw a better opportunity in UK and Europe. Uh, we tried to do a little bit US, but because the money was limited at the time, we just uh, 
we just decided to go on uh, UK and Europe. So, but we have a warehouse in the US. So we actually have a warehouse, a uh, 3PL in uh, US called ShipPub, which is kind of a very famous 3PL in US. Um, we, we have stock over there. Then we have a warehouse in 3PL in UK, one in Germany, one in the Netherlands, and one in China. So the one in China serves the Australia and New Zealand markets. The Germany just served the German market because we have the good um, response on the German market. Then we have one in the Netherlands that serves the European market, one in UK that just serves the UK market, and the one in US serves uh, United States. Uh, the one in UK as well serves the rest of the world. So like the same one shipped to like Canada or I don't know, uh, Africa or one of those countries. We have good deal with uh, with the UK warehouse, so we we use the UK warehouse to ship all over the world. Okay, fantastic. Thank you for that. Now you mm-hmm. mentioned that this asset is owner operated. How much time would you say, on average, on a weekly basis, does it take to run the business, and who else is needed on the team to keep it running functionally and efficiently, or is it already automated? The lot of automate. I mean the. The good, the good thing about smart cover is we don't have a lot of products. We always concentrate on a little amount of SKUs. So in terms of like ordering, supply chain, and all of that, it's uh, it's pretty much uh, automated. So in my team, just dedicated on smart cover, I have about three customer service reps, uh, which uh, one of them as well deals with ordering and supply chain, but we order once a month. So it's actually not, not a big of issue. And then uh, I have a media buyer, and someone that does the email. So one person in retention, one person in acquisition, and then someone that does uh, the emails as well. And then uh, it's hard to know how much time my content team dedicates to that uh, because I have like a designer, a video editor, and a copywriter, but they work on uh, all the brands. So I would say that probably the dedicates right now a very little amount of time on smart cover. We did a lot of work with Smart Cover because we had a studio as well, our own uh, production studio in uh, in Canada, where basically we did all the photo shoots. So um, all the content that you see in Smart Cover is done over a course of like five different shoots where we shot like video, product images, lifestyle images as well. So a lot of that work actually has already been done. The photo shoot, we shoot it ourselves and it's fully copyrighted by us. So anyone that decide to buy the business, they would buy also all the assets, uh, which is like 100K value basically between all the shoots because, you know, there is uh, their lifestyle. So there is like, I think we use between, I would say we use like 12, 12 to 14 models between the whole shoots uh, all together. So I would say I'm not involved in Smart Cover anymore. I mean, it's I'm like more involved now with the SaaS platform. So I would say that a team of, Five, six people, six people, I would say, can run the business uh, profitably. Uh, the same team can make uh, the business up to like a million in revenue. Uh, at the moment, the business is going around 100,000. So the revenue has decreased a lot comparing to what we did last year. The main reason has been uh, Facebook. So we are having, we have had issues with Facebook for the last two months since the iOS 14. Um, so we are basically just running mostly with the organic traffic and emails as well. Um, acquisition has been hard in the last few days, in the last few months. Okay, thank you for that. Now, what mm-hmm. would somebody need to do? Let's assume I purchased the business. What would I need to do mm-hmm. to continue operating the business in its current form? I think that, like the, the business, it's if someone wants to keep, let's say, you come in and you have a, your own advertising agency or you want to work with an agency, there's no problem there. You know, you just, uh, you have to need like a media buyer, a content team to start working on acquisition. Um, the current team that I have could work on this business too, I think. I would say that someone would be, would be happy to actually jump over. Um, but I think, yeah, I think you need someone on email like because email, we have a 30% returning customers on email. We have half a million email lists as well, which can be squeezed and used a lot. There's a lot of opportunities in wholesale as well that we've been exploring. <clears throat> we did about 200,000 euro in sales last year, just on wholesale order, orders. A company contacted us and wanting to you know, stock the product in their store. Um, there is definitely room for expansion in the US markets. 
Um, we have a 4.4 score on Trustpilot as well with over a thousand reviews. So that's, there is a lot of social proof built up. Awesome. Um, and the business comes as well with 300K worth of stock, which means that for the next two months or three months, you wouldn't have to buy any stock. Fantastic. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. Now, you've mentioned a couple of opportunities in which a new owner could potentially grow and scale the business. What are maybe the three biggest opportunities that you can see where a new owner can continue growing this? Definitely. I think the main challenge that we see right now, I think, in e-commerce has been the acquisition on Facebook. So we've been testing different channels as well, like Google, like Pinterest as well, especially because the mask last year was relying a lot on the, on the face mask, which had a lot of limitations with the, some channels. But the new product like the sleep mask, the new product like the, the this cover, the laptop sleeve and such, they don't have that much limitation. So I think Google could be another great opportunity to scale the business, which is something that we haven't looked at much. Um, wholesale as well is another big opportunity that we have not followed much through just because we've been concentrating on other projects, but we got inbound requests. So if someone actually you know, get the new business development manager to call up different stores, especially like because we're in the travel and lifestyle brand and travel is going to rise up in the future. Our product can be stocked in airports. Our product can be stocked in news agent and things like that. They're perfect. So this is like big opportunities there. Um, and adding new products. I think we, we noticed that whenever we add the new products, because we have the email list, um, you launch a new product, the customers are happy already. They buy it. But also you can also use the social proof that we built up to actually scale it up much quicker. Let's say, you know, just launching a, a, an online store without any social proof. So I think if someone puts their hands on it and start, you know, testing US, expanding the wholesale, uh, pushing the product that we have right now in different channels, not just on Facebook, uh, it, it will be a massive opportunity. I think... We have this opportunity right now. We just don't have the time. We just really don't have the time right now. We have to make a choice of either we continue with Smart Cover and push all the resources there, or we go with uh, the SaaS platform and we try to push the SaaS platform. And I think our heart right now is more in that um, than, uh, than in Smart Cover. That's all. Okay, perfect. Now, how does the business make money? What are all the different revenue streams? Ultimately, from um, the store itself, but have you broken into Amazon, Etsy, anything of that nature? Yeah, so we started with Amazon. It took it took a while, so that definitely is that like another opportunity. So Amazon has been very slow. So we started tapping into Amazon about three months ago, but we were able to get our first product over there. It took about two months, um, but now it's going. It's doing about few sales a day organically. Uh, we are working right now every two weeks. We're adding a new product. So we just added the sleep mask. We're going to add the sleep, the, the cover as well. So we hired an Amazon expert to do all the keyword research, optimizing the listings and all of this. So the plan for Amazon initially that we have was getting the products, optimizing the listing, getting few sales, getting the reviews. And once you add the reviews, starting with Amazon ads. So massive opportunity. If someone has... Um, Amazon experience, I want to take this forward. There is a big opportunity as well there. And uh, most of the work has been done, such as we already registered the brand, for instance, all the brand of a brand registry. Uh, we send all the documents because of the trademark, et cetera, right? That's, that's what actually took a little bit of time. Um, we don't, we have, we've tested Etsy, but it didn't bring any results. So I think uh, the main revenue of the business right now stays with the e-commerce uh, sites. So direct to consumer. Um, hold some wholesales coming in and there, like orders of like a thousand pieces, two thousand pieces, but definitely it's an expansion in there. And then Amazon could be another revenue stream. Fantastic, thank you. Now, how are you currently going about acquiring new customers? And walk me through the breakdown for your marketing costs. So. The main marketing cost has always been uh, Facebook together with native ads. So we use always set uh, Outbrain and um, yeah, Outbrain, Taboola and Facebook. That's the, the, the main revenue stream um, for acquisition. Um, and then retention on email. So in the last, I'll give you an example, like October, 
during the last last year where we we scaled the business was very much based on uh, acquisition on uh, Facebook and uh, native where marketing cost was around 40 40 to 50 percent uh, but our product cost on the other end including shipping is around 17 percent so we always around about 15 to 20 percent profit margin on that in the last few months since uh, Facebook iOS 14 has uh, kind of kind of mess everything up we haven't found a way to acquire traffic profitably so our marketing cost has been kind of significantly reduced but at the same time the revenue has been reduced as well so our marketing cost now is about 25 to 30 percent because uh, we noticed that with facebook every time we try to scale the marketing cost goes rise and the data is just not there it's just an issue i think that a lot of people have been experiencing since facebook cannot trace the purchases anymore correctly so we cannot see where there is a good opportunity for us to scale back up again. So for instance, this month we made around 100,000, 110,000 comparing to, you know, last year that we made like a million. Uh, last year, marketing cost was 50%. This month, the marketing cost has been 25%, but obviously because we just pumped email out, right? We just use more the organic and the, and the emails and the returning customer, right? Mm -hmm. We did a lot of work last year with the PR agency we invested quite a bit. I think we invested around 80, 90,000 pounds with the PR agency that did a lot of work with us on building the brand up. And we start seeing actually positive results right now, like from a lot of referrals that they built up. Uh, we were featured on national television as well. So we built a little bit of social proof. Um, yeah, this kind of things. So it's another opportunity as well. I think that I see is definitely on long-term strategy, more like SEO. Uh, and link building and such. Uh, we have a blog with over like 35 articles that were written by our copywriters. All of that could be optimized, make them more SEO friendly, starting to doing link building with other, with, other, with other things. So that's definitely a strategy that I'm not looking into right now because I'm looking into more uh, short term mm -hmm. rather than long term, just because I want to acquire customers as quickly as I can. Perfect, perfect answer. I appreciate that. Now, let Last question here. How big is your current team as it's now? And how many people does it take to effectively run Smart Cover? Yeah, so I think, as I said before, I think the team is around, you can run Smart Cover with seven people, uh, with three people on customer service right now, and they with uh, managing comments and also managing like the supply chain, which means supply chain is just really, you know, dealing with like sometimes the ordering or there is an order that, uh, you know, the, the fulfillment center asks you, hey, we kind of find an address, like there's small bits, but we ship within three or five days, right? Because we have these localized warehouses. So every store is connected to a local warehouse. So we ship locally pretty much. Like in UK, we ship in 48, 48 hours. Uh, United States is three to, five, three to five days. In Europe is three to five days. Uh, and then in terms of media buying, I would say one media buyer would be enough at the moment. If someone wants to do like Google and want to expand, I would recommend maybe to do another media buyer. And then, uh, and then in terms of content, like, uh, I don't know, a graphic designer, I guess. So I think six people. I mean, overall, the cost is around $12,000 per month for the team, right? All, all in it. But it depends where, where you get people out. But my team right now, it will be 12, around 12000 and they don't require any supervision because, as I was saying, a lot of work has been done already, like a lot of integration, the building of the team, the setting up the warehouses, working with the suppliers, setting, working with the contracts, uh, perfectioning the, the communication with the customer service and all of that has been done through the year. Mateo, I appreciate you taking time out of your afternoon to speak with me. I um, look forward no to your listing uh, on our platform. And if you need anything, please holler, okay?